This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey. And so there's so much to talk about, so much to learn about cannabis. And it's, it's this, what do we say, tell me news of that plant of many resources, which wandered far and wide, the ancient plant of food, fuel, and fiber, cultivated for millennia, 10,000 years or more have passed, and 50,000 different products made from this plant and all of the uses, and yet here we are just discovering hemp, cannabis, ashes, we talk about cannabis and religion, cannabis and medicine, cannabis and dear old Uncle Sam. And so that's where our odyssey begins, right here in the state of Hawaii with Senator Willis Barrow, who has been a avid supporter of medical cannabis since, what, 2002? Well, I was here in 2000 when that was my first year in the legislature, when we were the first legislature in the nation to pass medical cannabis, a medical cannabis program for our citizens. And uh, yeah, you're right though, we, um, you know, hemp has so many uses. And you know, going back to the 13 colonies yes. who were required to grow hemp uh, because it was an export crop. And, and they now, made paper. Right, and, and so many other products. And now we've come full circle. You know, it took some industrialists, some you know, rich millionaires to conspire with fake news to ban a product, cannabis. Um, Congress did that uh, through lies and deceit and, and just telling the American people, you know, false information about marijuana, about cannabis, and what it would do to society, which was just not true. The first fake news, or some of the first <laughs> that, fake news. Yes, <laughs> that we can depend on. But, yes. but now we're going to start, in 2018, a pilot program for industrial hemp, yes. the State uh, Department of Agriculture. And hopefully that will uh, bear some productive fruit and efforts. Well, it has the opportunity, let me put it that way, to create a whole new industry in Hawaii so that we can have something other than tourism and the military. When you think of 50,000 products that can be made from hemp and you have three crops a year, boy, just think I mean, what people can create out of that. You know how many trees it takes to create a roll of toilet paper? Can you imagine? <laughs> yes, I, this is just mind-boggling. If, if we could concentrate on, on you know, three areas, uh, a biofuel right, uh, for our um, energy needs with our vehicles, um, a construction material, uh, uh, because that's... there is a home in Maui, I believe, that is built out of hemp. Yeah, and it's called uh, hempcrete. Right. Hempcrete, yes. yes. And then, of course, the fiber, the clothing. Yes. You know, why can't we have a, a line of Aloha shirts, hemp I mean, Aloha it, shirts? I mean, so many possibilities. It and is. It's a, it could and be our next uh, it, golden it, it crop. Sh it should be. And when you think of ropes, for thousands of years, the ropes, the lines for ships and boats were made out of hemp. Yes. And now, just think of the, that industry alone in Hawaii with all of the boats that we have here. That is just a gold mine if you just begin to think of it. Right. And, you know, many, many other in, uh, countries have a hemp industry, and it's about time that uh, the, uh, the, the yep. thinking of the past ends, ends yes. and the United States gets into hemp and eventually adult use. When, when we look at this 
like I said, this industry and what it can be. If we, you're right, shed that yesterday's thinking and look forward because yesterday's not going to come again. So if we look forward and what it can be, because there are crops now, there are things now made, like the 3D printer. If you made fuel, the oil or whatever it's called, for a 3D printer, the 3D printer didn't even exist 20 years ago. So how would we even think that we had to, that hemp could be a use in a 3D printer? Exactly. I have knees made on a 3D printer. My, I have two artificial knees. They were made on a 3D printer. Whoever thought that we could do that? Technology, exactly. It, it's incredible. So, but let's let's talk about where we are today in with the, the state with the medical cannabis. With program. the medical cannabis, and for anybody that's interested, the state did decide to take, get rid of the word marijuana, and so now everything the medical products, everything says medical cannabis. And I thought that was a great idea the state came up with. Because the word marijuana has negative connotations, they decided to reach out and come into the 21st century. And yes. <laughs> and now, uh, this year, we've had our first medical cannabis dispensaries selling uh, in a retail establishment. I believe there are three operating and eventually statewide there will be 16. Mm -hmm. um, with the breakdown of um, three licenses on Oahu, two on Big Island, two on Maui, and one on Kauai. And um, there's gonna be some trial and error as this new healthcare industry um, you know, starts to uh, mature and become better, uh, but we have, I think, approximately 19,000 plus patients, and then it's grown considerably in the last year just because people knowing that dispensaries are going to be available and they don't have to grow their own like they're doing now. And you know, hopefully the price point will also come down because the supply is limited, especially with just three out of 16, so you know that there's a, a big gap that needs to be filled. But I expect that as more dispensaries come online, the price will come down. And it's going to have to come down if it's going to compete with the black market. If it's not cheaper or at least equal competitively, there will be people who just may bypass the dispensaries and go to the black market if they can save a few dollars. Um, which leads me to a bill that I'm going to be introducing oh, good. that would allow dispensaries to 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 give away the medical cannabis to people who are you know very poor um, you know below the poverty line and and they can't afford it if they want it um, so that's uh, one of the pieces of legislation that um, we'll be drafting in uh, 2018. Oh, very good. So now you belong to an organization that meets what quarterly about this whole issue of medical marijuana, the, the what is it called? Well, it's the uh, Legislative, Medical Cannabis Legislative Oversight Committee. Oversight Committee. Yeah. So with an oversight committee, is this made up of legislators or the public? How, who is part of the oversight? Well, there are four legislators, two from the Senate, two from the House, and multiple, multiple stakeholders, another 20 or so. Um, they include uh, law enforcement, the healthcare industry, um, uh, the owners are represented, patients, patients. are represented, uh, the university. So you can see it's a gamut of um, people and organizations that have different um, perspectives and views and interests in the cannabis industry. So what, what do you do exactly? Well, we talk about uh, ideas and recommendations that we will be looking at in the 2018 session. And um, I, I do have okay. a list here of Let's... some of them uh, because uh, we passed legislation now in 2015, 2016, 2017, and we're likely going to again in 2018 because this is a new industry. It's in its infancy. 
So uh, we're going to learn some things we can do um, through legislation, other ways the Department of Health can make changes through rulemaking. Oh. As, but uh, sometimes legislatively it's quicker than rulemaking. Oh, which yes. Many the, people the know. Department of, the Health Department has, what is it, 12 to 1900 new card holders each month, mm -hmm. and yet they have empty vacant positions and so they're behind. So, right. so oh, well, anyway, the so, health department's always an issue. <laughs> next year, the law uh, states that Hawaii can begin a reciprocity uh, system program for tourists oh. who come to Hawaii who have medical cards. So I'm expecting that there's going to be legislation that will allow that and, and set up a process where uh, we can cater to, you know, the potentially hundreds of thousands, if not millions of tourists who may be medical cannabis patients. Because they can't carry it across the state line. Correct. So they, the only way is if they, so if you're a veteran with PTSD and you're going to come to Hawaii on vacation, right. then you can go to the dispensary and, and, with, and with, with your California card. Yeah. And as you mentioned that, I can see Hawaii carving out a little niche market for uh, medical cannabis uh, patients who want to come to paradise or looking, or looking for a place that is uh, friendly uh, to their needs mm -hmm. as medical cannabis patients. Can you see medical cannabis resorts? Yeah, I was getting ready to say, let's, <laughs> let's go there. Yes. You know, let's, let's look at Hawaii as medical tourism. Exactly, a healing place. Yes. A place to unwind, to relax, yeah. and to, to, to get better uh, mentally and physically. physically. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, so that, that's another industry we need to look at. Yeah, medical cannabis uh, resorts and tourism, I can see uh, somebody getting into that in the future. I know the exact place on Kauai. What is the, uh, the, the beautiful place that was damaged in 25 years ago in the hurricane. Coco Palms. Coco Palms is yes, still yes. still sitting there languishing. Wouldn't that be perfect? That would just be perfect. Right, right. Okay. Let's go on. <laughs> Let's Another big issue in the news has been the opioid crisis, uh, especially nationwide. It's been hitting uh, the mainland, the continent, uh, worse than here in Hawaii, but it is a problem. And we're looking at legislation that will allow uh, medical cannabis to be used for um, helping people with substance abuse right. um, issues or addictions, uh, and in particular, and including opioids, okay. because people are dying weekly, if not daily, daily yes. um, of, of opioid overdoses, but not many people are overdosing on medical cannabis. They don't. Nobody is. Exactly. Nobody is. That's the point. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we need to take a break. Okay. We'll be back in a minute. And then we will talk about some of these other issues on your extensive list here. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Marsha. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Aloha. I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii Fridays at 3 p.m. Hawaiian Standard Time. We explore environmental issues, political issues, keeping it local any way we can. Aloha. And we are back with Senator Will Espero my dear, dear friend for many, many years, and I can count on him to talk about 
medical cannabis. Yes. We were talking about this opiate addiction and what, I guess, what really bothers me about, not, not the opiate addiction, well, yes, that too, but in the scheduling, cannabis is scheduled at the very top. Schedule one, one. yes. Opiates, which are killing people, are number two. So how is it that this opiate, which is written, it's legal, doctors write prescriptions for it all the time, it's killing people, but here we have cannabis that's not killing people, that is a Schedule One, and we in the state have the ability to deschedule, and we don't. Well, at this time, the big issue with Schedule One, everybody sees it as a federal issue and problem. Uh, with it being Schedule One, uh, we're categorized uh, with heroin. Yes. Uh, and Schedule One is that there's no medicinal value, and it's highly addictive in particular, which we know cannabis is not. It's it's not highly addictive, and it does right. have medical benefits. So, so the Schedule One goes back to the what we were right. talking about in the '40s, where Congress passed bills and laws based on lies mm -hmm. and false information, and they got away with it, and that's where we are today in terms of the prohibition on cannabis as, as recreational, except for the states that have done it. So I know there's people out there that says, Hawaii should change it to Schedule 2 or 3 or whatever the case. And we haven't, and I think part of the reason is because at this time, unless the federal government does but anything... But we don't, we don't have, we've already... The, the well, Supreme Court already decided we're that. We're moving 100% forward with our medical cannabis program. Nothing's stopping us. Nothing is in right. the way. The federal government, unless and until the federal government says anything, we're just moving forward. No, no what, I, what I'm getting going with that is that in 2006, the federal government, the United States Supreme Court said the state has the right to control its medical uh, industry. And so that takes this out of the realm of waiting on the feds because you've already decided that. So what is the holdup of descheduling? It's not the feds. That's a myth. Well, that's we'd a myth. Have now to we've already that's check already with been the health chairman. Okay. The health chairs are the ones that would schedule these hearings and uh, unless uh, there's a, uh, a large and big outcry to push for Schedule uh, 1 to Schedule 2, uh, it, it just hasn't happened. And so, we're still moving on. See, the fact that we have a medical cannabis program states that we, we disagree with you, State of Hawaii, with the United States. Right, and you've already proven that right. there's a medical a benefit and that no one is addicted to it and in spite of this what is it called gateway drug in which it's not so nobody nobody has been killed in an automobile with cannabis thousands of people are killed with alcohol nobody so what's the nonsense here it's all a myth so that, what do we need to do with is what I'm saying is, as, as voters, as people with cards, how do we, what do we need to do with the legislature, because that's where this is now, to move this, so to deschedule and move on to the next step? Well, I believe there are some in the legislature who don't think descheduling is a high priority right now and that there are other more important permanent issues because uh, no one is threatening our medical cannabis program. The federal government is not. They're not but having, they, I mean, you know, they're not 
using the Schedule One issue and closing us or 30 other jurisdictions that are doing this. Medical cannabis is here to stay and... Well, that was with this police department, you know, they're, they got all crazy because of the feds, which shouldn't be. That, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. When you look at the other, even with the hemp program that the state is supporting, they have certain rules and regulations that go back to the feds. That just shouldn't be. That's all I'm saying is how do we move from that stigma to, let's get real, you know. That's, that's the issue. Well, we do. So what do we need to do as, as, as ordinary people to move this? What do we do? You're, you're the legislator. You're the senator. What do we need to do? Well, like all bills, contact your legislators. Mm -hmm. Contact your representatives, your senators. And if you have a special interest on any bill, you know, let them know you'd like to um, see a bill heard or drafted or whatever the case may be. And uh, this, the Schedule One issue has come up sometimes, and we just haven't been able to, to, to get legislation passed on it, um, but it hasn't um, impeded any movement and improvements on our medical cannabis medical, program. Right. Yeah. So, but it is a problem with the, with the hemp, well, the but hemp program. We do have the, the pilot beginning next yeah. year. But if you read the directions in the pilot project, even that, because of the schedule, which is crazy. Right, but they're basing that schedule one on the federal Feds. interpretation, right? Yes. So that's why. That's why we need to get rid of that so that we can move this project on without that right. nonsense. And, and, and there's some thinking that, you know, until the feds take action on the schedule one, nothing's stopping Hawaii and our medical cannabis program. Yep. And so, we're not even talking uh, legalization. Um, at least uh, not anytime soon, I don't think. Uh, so uh, the medical cannabis is, is the area we want to focus okay. on, and which we are. So let's finish your list here before we run out of time. Okay. Well, there's a, uh, a discussion on edibles. Uh, uh -huh. We don't have edibles. We do have tinctures, lotions, lozenges. But when we're talking about edibles, we're talking about uh, candies, uh, pastries, cookies, drinks. Uh, well, I would think that if you have a child that has epilepsy, you want something that this child can take, wouldn't you? Well, we're as talking, opposed to to. Uh, well, I'm talking about medical. I'm talking about a, if you if you say that this cannabis can control the seizures, but this is a child. So, what do you give? How do you no, give them? No, let me explain. I'm sorry. This is edibles to be sold in dispensaries. Oh. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So right now, um, you're right. Many of the patients, uh, they're growing and they're making edibles. Oh. And, and they're, you know, getting oils and, and you know, whatever else they get. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, how do you give a child a dosage? Of, yes, you as can, opposed to smoking, you know. Yes, yes, yeah. you can um, um, put it in an oil form, and then put that oil in in food or whatever oh, the case may okay. be. That's one way. Uh -huh. Okay. So, insurance reimbursement working group. What is that? Uh, well, patients, since this is a um, in essence an health a healthcare issue, um, uh, right now patients. Uh, just paying straight out of their pocket cash for this medicine, whereas you know, in our system, the way we set it up, um, forgetting about the Schedule One, right. but uh, if it's a medicine, why shouldn't insurance companies give you a reimbursement? And that's what this is, issue oh, is about. Oh, very good. That uh, getting all the stakeholders, ins including the insurance companies, and seeing can we um, add this into the list of reimbursements? Well, that makes perfect sense. Right. So that would be one thought is a working group to look at that. And um, a working group to look at the, uh, um, just to get more specifics and details on the edibles. Because mm. once you're talking edibles, you're talking about a place where these items are going to be prepared, kitchens, oh. Department of Health. Oh. Yes. So that really opens up a, you know, a, a, a gamut of 
rules and regulations that's mm -hmm. going to have to be followed. But uh, you know, I'm hoping we could get some some edibles available at the dispensaries by 2020. Um, but we'll we'll see on that one. Now this is a big one here. The patients enter island transportation. That is a biggie for me. It it seems well really. It, it, it is and it's not because if a patient can now get cannabis on every island or eventually, okay. then there's really no need no for need them to. It. But until take then. It. Well, my understanding, and I think we, we just need to look at this because it's sort of gray, but my understanding is the TSA has not been um, taking people with small amounts of medical okay. cannabis. So, so that's it, good. Yeah. But we are, we're going to, I think, make just sure that that's, make that language yeah. stronger. But if you look above there, that's an area that i like to see UH get involved with. Right now, the university, uh, because of the Schedule One problem, doesn't want to get involved in any um, experimentation, research that has to do with growing, touching the plant, the seeds. Uh, but what i like to see... So if we did this get deschedule, then they could, could get into the research. Well, what we can do now is see if the university can partner with the Department of Health and we could tell patients to give us your information. This is a voluntary reporting and we can start collecting. So if someone is a patient, they've got this ailment, they're taking this much product or, or uh, cannabis in, in this form or that form, dosage, and start collecting and getting a data bank uh, so that once you see uh, research and um, development, um, getting the green light from the federal government, mm -hmm. then we'd be... So that's know, when we need to get rid of the federal government. We're back to schedule. Okay, yeah. I get it. Now, <laughs> so we're back to deschedule. Okay. But we now. can gather data without the Schedule 1 change. Yeah. We can voluntarily have patients give us information about their dosage and well, how it's helping anybody, them. any research group could do that. It doesn't depend on federal... No, funding. but it would. we'd have to pass a law. Yeah. See, the university, we'd have to pass a law. I'm saying, but if you were a researcher and you're not dependent on federal grant, you could do this. Right. Because it's a volunteer well, thing. No, I'm, yeah, but I'm talking about getting the University yep, of Hawaii. Right. Um, so let's, we involved. have a minute left. Okay. Let's, what is this use outside the home? Well, we had a discussion on that. On Right now, you're only supposed to um, ingest at home. Uh -huh. Right. But what if somebody, and not smoking, but could somebody take some on the park? You know, and, and I guess if you're not being obnoxious and rude and and uh, making a, I mean, nobody would even know. No, just, yeah. But this someone was talking about just clarifying that you could, if you wanted to, go to the park, go to the beach. But you can't if you're smoking. Right, right, but not, I mean, because talking, that's smoking anything. Exactly, we have our anti-smoking yep. laws already. Yep. Right, right. So, what is discrimination? Adult use. Well, this is an area that uh, the Senate has supported in the past: uh, the decriminalization of the adult use of cannabis. Oh. Okay. So people wouldn't be going to jail for small amounts, and this is an area that the Senate has supported, but we've had problems passing it in the House. Oh, okay. And usually in other states. Um, they went from medical cannabis to decriminalization to adult use legalization. Oh. That... Oh. Okay, so we are coming up on 2018. You will be back yes. to tell us more how we're progressing with these issues yes. and how we can help. Certainly. And... and So thank you so much for coming, and we will see you soon. Thank you, Marsha. Happy to be here with you. Aloha. Happy New Year.